Hello, today I'm going to be teaching you how to implement the simple mobile joysticks pack. After buying and importing the package, you will see that you have these four folders, the GUI, joystick scripts, prefabs, and scene. The magic happens within the, the prefabs and the joystick scripts. Uh, to demonstrate all of the abilities of the pack, I'm going to click on the scene for simplicity purposes. And when I press on it, you're going to see that I have this as the demo scene. I'm going to go into the controllers and just take away the joystick uh, text and touchpad text, which is added for your um, ability to see the input changing. Um, as the joystick uses canvases and is Unity 5 and Unity 4.6 optimized, it the text will disappear after taking the text out of a canvas. I'll grab this and I will replace it with the prefab as shown. Um, so before I do that, I'll delete this and now I'll grab this joystick script uh, or prefab and press it on here. Now to put everything back to position, I'll grab the text and put it in the same um, canvas. Now uh, again, this is its own canvas, so it needs its own event system. If you have an event system and are using a different canvas, make sure you only have one event system. So with that, when you press play, everything should be working um, except no input or nothing's happening because nothing is linked. To help you link things, uh, the main camera has a demo script which grabs the text fields over here and links them with the touchpad and joystick uh, components and script. And it grabs that by get component, which you can call in any script but, or by making a public variable like shown in the demo script here. So grabbing the joystick I'll put that on stick, touchpad, I'll put that on pad, and now you'll see that that input changes. Now, we also have cubes that can be rotated, and that is under the camera as their children. And here is a sample script, which can use a touchpad or joystick to help you rotate an object. So the first cube is going to use a joystick, and the second cube is going to use a touchpad. When I hit play, you're going to see that when I start moving the joysticks or the touchpad, the cubes start to rotate based on um, the input field given here. And again, um, simple script. So after that, let's go through the things you can do within the controller itself. So these controls are uh, multi-touch um, enabled meaning you can have five joysticks and no joystick will interfere with one another. Uh, to show this, I've added a fake ID, touch ID, so you can't start another um, button with a drag, simply just over dragging over and activating that one. And um, the inputs also do not change. Um, with that said, uh, let's continue. So you have the touchpad, and the joystick. Let's start with the joystick. In the scene view, you will see that you have a gizmo rendering of the touch area. Moving the touch area will allow or um, will allow you to have a bigger place where the player or user can touch and activate the joystick. So making mine really small, when I hit play, I can't activate the joystick unless I press here. And that's what this gizmo does. I'm going to reset the touch area back to 300. Here you have a, cho a joystick input, which is a public variable just for you to be able to call it from another uh, script, but you can also see it live time and see what's happening within the code. Hide joystick, if I turn that off, it also automatically turns off start action and drag. Um, so I'll just turn that off as well. And that means the joystick is always visible and snaps back to its original position wherever you place it. Um, when I turn on hide joystick without starting action and drag, it uses this position, in-game position, as a zero, 0 for the joystick and then any other position as the input. So by pressing here, it already starts at negative 0.3 and 0.1, or 0.7, and so on. Um, so I'm going to turn that back on, and as you see, if I press anywhere, it starts that as zero, 00 until I start moving the joystick. 
touchpad similarly has the use image and use image size as touchpad and this means meaning there's an image attached to this object actually and you can see that in game and if you use if you're not using an image then you don't need you can turn these off if you turn this off it automatically turns off the image at start time meaning that this will be a touch area always and it won't be indicated do this if you are using just have the screen as touch as you probably wouldn't need a gizmo to outline uh, use image as size as you see this is a touch area same as the joystick if I turn this off I can go in the scene view and I'll see that the touch area changes uh, depending on this input and not the image size and when I hit play um, the image will only get activated um, when I press in this area and not outside the specified area so I'll keep both of these on and I'll just hit the bounds and that's how simple it is um, to see how this code is de developed uh, and to show you how easy it is to implement it inside your code um, let me open that okay opening the sample script you'll see that this code is also commented uh, for the public uh, inputs um, and it can be as easy as drag and drop into a public script so you can call the script or you can do dot get component in there I just call the joystick input which you can see in the touch input and I'll just calling these variables and calling them into the rotation parameters and uh, that's how simple it is to implement so I hope this uh, joystick pack helps you with your future mobile development. Thank you.